perhaps no other Super NES role-playing game has had the longevity and hype of Chrono Trigger. Played and replayed by fans for decades, Chrono Trigger has become one of the most popular games in the entire genre, and is continually recognized as one of the best Super NES games ever. Undoubtedly, Chrono Trigger did much to shape our own conceptions of what a role-playing game truly should be. It has also continued to captivate the minds of millions of gamers. The game's development team included some of the most very famous people in the gaming industry. It all started when Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator of the Final Fantasy series, Yuji Horii, the creator of the Dragon Quest series, and Akira Toriyama, famous artist of Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball, all got together and decided to collaborate on a game to be published by Squaresoft. Kazuhiko Aoki produced the game, and Masato Kato took the lead role in writing the plot. Yasunori Mitsuda contributed most of the soundtrack. If there ever was an RPG dream team, the group that produced this game was it. The game's central premise, time travel, was continually debated from the start of production. In various brainstorm sessions, designer Masato Kato felt that time travel would lead to repetitive gameplay and boring scenarios. However, he was eventually swayed to adopt the theme, fully dedicated to making it work. Also, the decision that Chrono would never speak was also controversial among the development team. In the end, it was decided that the only proper choice was to make it so that Chrono never talked, as it would allow the player to view himself as the protagonist of the story. The team deliberately structured the game in such a way as to avoid a long string of errands that included retrieving certain items or defeating particular monsters. Gasper was originally envisioned as a playable character, but he was cut from a starring role early on. Also, it was originally intended that Chrono would remain dead throughout the entire story, a vision that was reversed when Squaresoft determined that this would make the game way too depressing. The game's story begins as Chrono wakes up and heads to the Millennial Fair to visit his friend Luca, who has built a contraption that sends people from one place to another. He runs into a girl, Marl, who is actually the Queen of Guardia. When they find Luca, Marl's pendant reacts to the machine. Suddenly, there's a malfunction, and the two are sent back in time. Chrono finds that he must save Marl's ancestor to make things right in his timeline. Eventually, it is revealed that the world was destroyed by a creature named Lavos in 1999, and Chrono and his friends decide to devote themselves to doing everything within their power to end his reign of destruction. Unlike many of the other games in the genre, there are no random battles in Chrono Trigger. Instead, enemies that are bumped into start a battle sequence. This was a breath of fresh air to many people turned off to role-playing games due to the annoyance of random battles. For one of the first times in role-playing game history, battles also take place in the exact locations in which enemies are encountered. This created a more consistent, streamlined approach that pleased many. Battles allow for the usage of techs, where characters can spend magic points to perform special attacks. Different character combinations unlock different techs, and there are both double and triple ones. This adds another fun feature to the game, and changes depending on your group composition. A lot of the fun in the game comes from learning which characters work well with others, and how to construct the best team to handle each situation. As far as the graphics go, the sprites are bold and vibrant, and the overall look is fantastic for a game that came out in 1995. Toriyama did an incredible job at designing the characters, and the battle animations are especially great. Enemy Strikes also have animations, which was a unique departure from most previous role-playing games. Speaking of the characters, the cast is certainly one of the best for any RPG ever. There aren't too many characters to make the story too cumbersome, and the ones that exist in the game each add a unique facet to the storyline. In captivating fashion, the game slowly reveals the motivations behind each of the characters bit by bit to create its impressive narrative. For instance, the zeal sequence taught us a lot about Magus that we didn't know before. Ah, and then there's the soundtrack. Yasunori Mitsuda poured his soul into this soundtrack, creating an incredible array of songs to fit the game's various time frames and situations. According to reports, Mitsuda actually worked so tirelessly on this game that he put in long hours into the night, even waking up at times with sudden inspiration for new tracks. Too sick to finish the last songs, Final Fantasy mainstay Nobuo Uematsu chipped in a few last songs to complete the soundtrack. 
few of my favorite songs for this soundtrack include the Zeal theme, Magus' theme, and the Chrono Trigger main theme, all of which are featured in this video. By far, this is one of the best SNES soundtracks, or maybe game soundtracks, ever. Trust me, if you play this game, these songs will get stuck in your head. The game's story is also a shining example of what an RPG should offer. It really is fascinating and never fails to keep you hooked. Events that take place in the past shape the future and alter the course of events in a way that affects the way the story pans out. Almost every plot element introduced throughout the story is of high importance, and there's virtually no filler or boring scenarios to speak of. When I initially played this game, there were several times that I planned to stop, but just had to keep playing because I was so gripped and hooked by the story. The game also does an incredible job of making the player think one way about certain characters and situations, but then makes them rethink those positions with a bit more information as the story progresses. Frog, Magus, and Gasper are excellent examples of this. I found Magus's intentions and motivations to be especially interesting. The way the game works, there are also various secret items you can obtain only if conditions from the past would make them available in the future. The attention to detail and continuity between the time periods must have taken meticulous discipline and is easily one of the best aspects of the game. Undoubtedly, one of the best and most unique facets of Chrono Trigger is its ending system. Instead of a single ending, the game provides multiple endings that depend on the circumstances through which the player beats the game. The game actually gives you great control over when you challenge Lavos, which drives the different endings. There are 13 endings in total, and some are much more difficult to obtain than the others. In one ending, for instance, everyone including Chrono and his mother are lizards because the lizards triumphed over the humans in the ancient past. In another, Robo runs into his sweetheart in Lean Square in the future, where the bell is still prominently displayed. In yet another ending, Magus as the Prophet decides to confront Lavos, choosing to exact vengeance upon him for ruining everything he knew and loved. There is even a secret developer team ending where each of the developers of the game appears as a sprite to converse with the winning player. The variety of endings was truly an exceptional marvel. It sets Chrono Trigger apart from other games in the genre and certainly adds to the replayability. There's almost no other RPG like this, and it's really quite awesome. Another great feature of the game, New Game Plus, allows players to start the game over after having beaten it, allowing them to progress through the story once again with the same stats, levels, and items. This is a highly enjoyed feature that added a huge amount of replay value and kept gamers interested in the game long after its original release. Of all the great aspects of Chrono Trigger, this one continues to draw attention and many fans recommend the feature to be placed in other games as well, using Chrono Trigger as an example. And really, replay value seemed to be what the development team had been aiming at the entire time. Hironobu Sakaguchi seemed to be alluding to this when he said the following, quote, Wherever we could, we tried to make it so that a slight change in your behavior caused subtle differences in people's reactions, even down to the smallest details. I think the second playthrough will hold a whole new interest. One of the gripes some players had with Chrono Trigger surrounds its difficulty. Some have alleged that the game is simply too hard, with unpredictable boss mechanics and challenging encounters. To this charge, I can't fully agree. Some of the bosses are definitely difficult, like Magus and the Golem Twins, but most of the game isn't nearly that hard. My only minor criticism of the game is in regard to its length. A typical first playthrough lasts only about 25 hours, which is a bit less than some of the other RPGs on the system. However, the game makes up for the relatively short story with lots of bonus content. There are actually quite a few significant bonus storylines to follow, and they actually have tangible relevance to the overall plot of the game. This made it seem like the side quests were actually part of the game, rather than just throwaway scenarios. The game was a bestseller both in Japan and in the United States, where millions of copies were sold in 1995 alone. Nintendo Power, GameFAQ, Game Informer, and GameSpot have all included Chrono Trigger in greatest games of all time lists. The game is still often played today and even streamed online, and it draws the attention of the speedrun community. Bar none, Chrono Trigger is one of the best role-playing games in history. The few defects it has are clearly outshined by the bright spots, 
and I still like playing the game today. In my mind, the only RPG on the system in the same realm is Final Fantasy VI. I think Chrono Trigger deserves all the praise that it continues to get, and even more. And that'll do it for my Chrono Trigger retrospective and review. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos.